Hey folks, welcome. And um, my wife Jennifer's here right beside me helping me run things. And uh, we'll be here in just a second. There's a little delay between this and that. That's why I'm lighting the screen here. Um, this is our first time doing this, so, uh, and I'm extremely nervous. So we'll see how this goes. But, um, yeah, but it's something I need to do. Uh, many of you know I've been um, I've been working with leather for 39 years off and on, and uh, it's been a hobby. It's been great. Back in the late 80s, early 90s, we actually did shows for a little while, um, and it's just life happened. Get busy. Just don't spend as much time doing things as you'd like to. So. So what I'd like to do tonight is take a first step toward making this a real business. I want to show you my latest products, um, tell you about them, get feedback, see if anyone's interested in purchasing them, or at the least um, get that feedback and see what kind of products you, you would be interested in purchasing. All right, that's, that's my goal anyway. So we'll see how that goes. So um, these pieces, one second, turn that volume down, please. I'll put in your lows. Um, thank you. <laughs> All right. Let me start with my leather feathers. Um, these are all inspired by um, the beauty and complexity I see in God's creation, especially in our uh, the many trips we made out west, well, especially to our favorite place, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and Grand Teton National Park. Um, if you ever go there, we recommend staying at the Inn on the Creek. They treat you great, and uh, a couple blocks walk into town for all the restaurants and galleries and shops and then 20 minute drive up the road and you're in the Tetons. But anyway, these are leather feathers. This whole feather is made from one piece of leather that's approximately an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch thick when I start. The pattern's traced into the leather, cut, and then you tool it and you add the texture to both the animal and uh, the feather itself. On the back, after I skive it down on the edges, thin it down on the edges, I use a wood burning tool to add texture to the back of it. A little tip of an elk antler right there. And we have, I have lots of memories and stories of elk. Um, grew up, born and raised just north of Pittsburgh. Grew up in Pennsylvania and we have an elk herd up in the middle of the state up there, which we visited a number of times. We've seen elk out uh, Rocky National Park uh, with good friends of ours up in Banff and Jasper, Canadian Rockies, Glacier and all. Uh, but if you're ever if you love elk, if you're ever in Jackson Hole in the winter, you have to take a sleigh ride in the National Elk Refuge. Um, they take you out, horse-drawn sleigh, out through the herds of elk, and there's literally thousands of elk out there. It's amazing. Now this, on all these original pieces, inside the frame is, is actual leather, uh, leather backing. So it's gonna have scars and folds and creases and texture. It's just gonna to add to the uh, uniqueness and the character of each piece. And then this frame is made from a slab of cherry that my niece Corey helped me plane down. And we intentionally left some rough edges to give the frame a little more character as well. But my favorites, or the reason I did this, so 
put it this way, the memory that this brings back. Um, interestingly enough, I never even saw an elk that morning. It was um, a morning in the Grand Tetons where I wanted to get up and see the sunrise hitting the Tetons. So I was up extra early. Uh, it was late September, so the rut was on. And I drove up to Schwabacher's Landing. And as soon as I stepped out of the car, I could hear this echoing sound of this elk bugling. And he was in the woods right beside the stream. So I walked down the stream past a couple of beaver ponds got set up. Um, it was a real crisp and cold morning. And the whole time I was there, he was just bugling. It was, it was a hauntingly beautiful sound. And then when the sun did come up, it just lit up the tops of the mountains um, like they were on fire. You could see the, that and then the reflection in the stream. It was really beautiful, a special memory. And actually, I, I updated my the cover photo on my Facebook page the other day. Uh, that was a sunrise in the Tetons, not exactly the same morning, but um, you can see how beautiful they are. Anyway, on to moose. I love moose. I think they're so cool. And this is told the same way the elk was. Single piece of leather. We were in Jackson Hole last Christmas, and we were coming home uh, the afternoon of New Year's Eve. So that morning, we wanted to get out, take advantage of our time there. And we drove around everywhere that we had seen wildlife that week. And just in that day alone, we saw over a dozen moose. Um, one here, one there, uh, a cow with her calf three bulls hanging out together, all with their full antlers. It was just really neat. And I came home knowing that I was going to tool a couple of uh, moose. So the back of this is pigskin, black pigskin. You can see it's a little more porous. And then this frame is made from a piece of oak that was used in the construction of an old barn. Still see a couple nail holes in it. For this moose, I wanted to do something a little different. So I added, um, I cut out this antler from a separate piece of leather and attached it to give it more of a 3D effect. And these are real feathers, another elk antler tip. First time we saw elk in Jackson Hole, there was a family of three snacking on some trees right beside, in a little park right beside the visitor center just as you're um, driving into town. And we've seen, we've seen them in people's front yards, walking through the streams, eating the landscaping, never know where you're going to see them. This is a piece of cherry as well. Same piece as the elk frame was made from, just stained a different color. One thing you'll notice about these feathers is they're stiff. There's two reasons for that. Once I'm done tooling them, and before I add the paint, these are all, I use acrylic paints on these, artist acrylics. I put a, a finish on here that helps stiffen it. And then also in the back, I cut a gouge down the middle of the back of the feather and put in a heavy piece of heavy gauge wire 
and then cover it up with a back quill, which gives them stiffness. And I intentionally don't put glass on here so that you can pick them up. You don't want to handle them a lot, but you can uh, pick them up to show them and get a closer look at them. Now this eagle here, this is already sold, but it's um, a real interesting piece and I wanted to show you and tell you about the technique and everything. Again, this is made from a single piece of leather that starts out an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch thick. Trying to find a camera here. But the, the technique on this is you tool it like I normally do, and then you take a surgical scalpel and you go in and you cut every one of those feathers individually. You lift it up and then you're taking that scalpel and you're texturing it, putting all the cuts in to texture. And you do that on each and every feather. So on a piece like this, there's a whole lot of knife cuts. Sorry to turn my back to you so often. But this buffalo is another piece where you can use, where I use the cut and lift technique. You can see all its hair, its beard, its head, top of its head, its mane, all cut with a scalpel and lifted up. I even cut under this horn a little bit to lift that up, give it more dimension, third dimension. In the memory, I do all these because they, um, they remind me of a, a special time or event or trip or day or whatever. And, and I'm hoping they'll do the same for you too, that you'll see one of these pieces and it will remind you of a time that you spent you know, at a national park or in Alaska getting married or whatever. Um, but this piece, the first time we went to um, Yellowstone National Park up to see Old Faithful, we were walking up to Old Faithful and we saw all these rocks there all around the base and it surprised me a little bit. Then one of those rocks stood up and it really surprised me. It turned out to be a small herd of buffalo and um, they were still there when Old Faithful went off. Some were standing and eating, some were walking away, some were um, still laying down. It made for some really cool pictures. It's a black and white image. I'm getting a lot of reflection there, but maybe you can see it. But. We're still working on the mounting for that. It'll probably be mounted in a frame or some other way. Um, it's just a good way to hold it for now. Keeps it at right angle. And then the pricing on these, um, this elk and the moose would be $1,680. $1, the uh, 3D moose would be $1,880. Uh, a feather like this would be 2,220, and then the buffalo would be 2,080. And I know that originals aren't for everybody, so I had some prints made to um, give people uh, more of an opportunity if they wanted to, uh, if they like a piece and to support me. Um, there's four different styles of prints, and you can get any of these four feathers, leather feathers on any of these styles. Um, this first one is a watercolor, a print on watercolor paper. The detail is really nice. 
the image size is six by 19 and it has a two inch white mat frame around it. So the total size is 10 by 23. There's also these canvas gallery wraps. These come with an inch and a half wrap, wire on the back, hardware included, so they're ready to hang. One interesting thing about these wraps is the way that they do the sides and all, is they duplicate this and then they use that on the side. So you end up seeing the, the feather on the back or on the side or bottom. Another print option is these metal, metal prints. These are a different, different type of print, kind of reflective. They're very nice and light. Again, these come ready to hang. Sorry for that light in there. This one had a different hanging system. It has the, the clips ready to mount on the wall. And then the last print type is a print on wood, which is something new for me. And it's, it's interesting because you can see the grain of the wood through the print. Gives it a uniqueness and, and character. These, again, this comes ready to hang, clips on the back. Uh, the price on the prints, watercolor print is $100, the gallery wraps are $140, the metal prints are $110, and the wood print is $120. And that includes shipping. Um, if you would want one of those, I order it directly from the printer and they send it directly to you. Let me see something here real quick. Alrighty. Just trying to change the setting there. All right. So one other leather feather product I have is this um, wolf. This is an older piece. I did this years ago. I wanted to try something different. So made the feather. Wrapped it in a piece of cowhide here. Um, the pattern for this wolf came out of one of my art books. This piece would go for 480. Any questions on the feathers? Not that I can see them in there, but. Hopefully Jennifer would see them if any questions come up. One of, thanks for hanging in there. A few more things to show you. Um, last Christmas, like it was probably November, they say we were planning to go to Jackson Hole. And then in November, we saw a post from the owners of the Inn on the Creek that their uh, dog of many years, Lola, had passed away. So right away, Jennifer asked me if I could do one, paint one of my oyster Christmas shells, seashell ornaments for them. Uh, 
Instead, I played around with things and I ended up making a leather ornament for them. And it turned out so well that I wanted to do, I ended up doing some more. So I don't have Lola, she's in Jackson Hole, but I was able to get a few of these back. Um, this is Dexter. We made this for our neighbors, and if you can see the thickness of that, these are embossed. I'll tell you about that in a second. But we made this for our neighbors and good friends, Drew and Laura. Laura, they really helped us get through COVID last year. Um, practically every Friday night or every weekend, we had dinner out in our front yard under the pear tree and just since we couldn't go anywhere, we shared life together. So I wanted to make them something special and they've had Dexter for a long time. So they really appreciated this. Now these have a little extra depth because they're embossed. I tool it like normal and then I push it up from the back, um, stretching it out where it needs to be a little taller, where it comes out towards you more. Then I fill that cavity with leather dust and rubber cement. I have to glue a piece of leather on the back to hold it all in there. Then I have to retool it, give it texture, and then paint it. And that's that was the picture I went by to come up with Dexter. And for Valentine's Day this year. I surprised my wife with uh, an ornament of Barkley. He was a dog. He was the best dog we ever had. And he's been gone a little while. We still miss him. But you can see the dimension and the depth in there. I was just was able to get a few pictures. For reference, make him. And the last one that I have, this is Lemon. Lemon belongs to one of the ladies at work. One thing, another thing I do to help give it a little extra dimension is I, I take my scalpel and I cut certain places and lift it up like on here. On Lemon it was uh, the brow ridge and under the muzzle or under his nose and you lift those up a little bit and it just helps to give it extra depth. And that was the uh, picture of Lemon that I had to work with. Lemon, this one was finished with a clasp. So this could be attached to a purse or a keychain or anything like that. Now these leather ornaments um, would go for anywhere between 200 and 250 depending on uh, the texture and the pattern of your pet. And I already have five of these on order um, that I have to get done before Christmas and I can only do a few more before Christmas. So if you're interested at all in that, uh, let me know as soon as you can. Um, We'll see what happens. And if you have questions on anything, um, or you want to see things better one on one, just let me know. We can do a Zoom call and go from there. All right. Thanks for joining me, folks. Really appreciate it. And we'll be talking to you soon.